In this lesson, we will talk about the circulatory pathway that blood follows as it moves through heart structures and blood vessels. This diagram represents only the pathway and not correct anatomical position of all the blood vessels. We will start in the upper receiving chamber of the heart known as the right atrium. Keep in mind, this is as we're looking at correct anatomical position of a patient. So this is the right atrium, this side would be the left atrium. Blood enters into the right atrium and passes the first atrioventricular valve known as the tricuspid. You can take the three letters tri, T-R-I, and rearrange them to R-I-T to help you remember that the tricuspid is on the right side of the heart. Valves help prevent backflow of blood from a ventricle back into an atrium. As blood moves from the right atrium through the tricuspid, it enters the right ventricle, where then it will move away from the heart via an artery. The artery that carries blood from the right ventricle is the pulmonary artery, and at the base of the pulmonary artery is the pulmonary valve. Pulmonary is a root word that pertains to the lung, so the pulmonary artery carries blood away from the heart to the lungs. In the lungs, deoxygenated blood will become oxygenated. Oxygenated blood will then return to the heart by means of a vein. Since it's coming from the lungs, we know this as the pulmonary vein. Pulmonary veins dump blood into the left atrium, which then passes the next atrioventricular valve known as the bicuspid. Blood will enter into the strongest pumping chamber of the heart, the left ventricle, and then blood will be ejected through the aortic valve into the largest artery of the body, which is the aorta. The aorta carries blood to the arms, head, and also to the lower portions of the body, where nutrient exchange can take place. Oxygenated blood becomes deoxygenated as tissues absorb oxygen and blood will then return to the heart by means of the inferior and superior vena cava. Blood returns to the right atrium from the superior and inferior vena cava, passes the tricuspid valve and enters the right ventricle, which ejects blood through the pulmonary artery to the right and left lung. Blood will return to, from the lungs via the pulmonary veins and enter into the left atrium, past the bicuspid atrioventricular valve, also known as the mitral valve, enter the strongest pumping chamber of the heart, the left ventricle. As the left ventricle contracts, the aortic valve opens and blood moves away from the heart by means of the aorta. These branches of the aorta carry blood to the head and the arms, and this umbrella handle portion of the aorta carries blood to the inferior portions of the body. Using the sheep heart, we will also go through the pathway, but the sheep heart will not include all the structures seen on the as the diagram on the right. I first denote left versus right. I notice the thin myocardium surrounding the right ventricle compared to the thick myocardium surrounding the left ventricle. Above the right ventricle, is the thin-walled right atrium. So here is the right atrium where blood enters from the superior and inferior vena cava. Moving through the first atrioventricular valve, the tricuspid, blood will enter into the right ventricle. Attached to the atrioventricular valves are always heart strings known as chordae tendinae. Not seen on this section, blood will move away through the pulmonary valve and the pulmonary artery and return to the heart by means of the pulmonary veins to the left atrium. This large flap here is part of the atrioventricular valve known as the bicuspid. Blood then moves into the left ventricle, past the aortic semilunar valves, through the thick-walled aorta to the body. The right side of the heart pumps blood to the lungs. This is known as the pulmonary circuit. Pulmonos is a root word that pertains to the lungs. The left side of the heart pumps blood to the rest of the body and its systems. So this side of the heart 
is known as the systemic circulation. This accounts for the thickness of the left ventricle compared to the thickness of the right ventricle. Both ventricles pump the same volume of blood, but the myocardium surrounding the left ventricle is much thicker because it needs to provide greater force to pump blood to the whole body, whereas the right ventricle is pumping to the lungs, which are right next to the heart itself.